Hello princesses! Today I'm going to be doing my November get ready with me. So I'm going to be creating this look here which is okay. I'm not a huge fan of everything today but I do really enjoy the eyeshadow so that is definitely a plus for me. So if you want to see how I created this look then just keep watching. Okay so I'm just going to keep the rest of my hair tied up for <laughs> the time being because this is the first time that I've put makeup on in such a long time with having a fringe because when you guys watch this, this is like when I just got it cut like today and I'm already struggling with having hair everywhere. Like it's not uncommon for me because I have a lot of hair but yeah, just gonna put up with a bowl cut just a little bit, okay? <laughs> so I'm gonna start off with a primer. I don't have any primers this month to talk about. So I'm just gonna be using the Misha Glow Balm which I really like and you guys have seen plenty of times before. This one it smells so good and it makes my skin look really beautiful so I'm basically just putting that on my cheeks because I don't really have to do anything to my forehead <laughs> and a little bit on my nose and around my mouth as well just to brighten it up a bit. The only place that I'm not putting this on is this part of my pore area here because that doesn't need any more luminosity. Oh honestly it smells so good and it just makes my skin look super radiant. It's Beautiful. Today's base is going to be the Mama Day All Stay Foundation in the shade 13 and I'm going to apply this one with a cushion puff as normal. I still haven't done the foundation swatches for all of the foundations this um, in the two months which is a weird thing to say because by the time you see this it, they will have like been way done but um, it's on the to-do list for today that's for sure. But I really enjoy this foundation so far. I think that it's a really nice colour. I don't know if it's super, super perfect. But honestly, it works quite well with my neck at the moment. So that's really great for me. And it's super easy to apply. The only thing that I have about it is that the packaging is, packaging is really nice. But it's only 20 mils. Like, it's a very small amount of product. Which, in, for me doesn't really make a huge difference because I have so many foundations in my collection that there's like it's really hard to finish them. I mostly finish up um, cushions because I use those a lot for swatches. So what I'm doing today is I'm going to be putting this makeup on and then I'm actually going to be removing it and then when I reapply, so when I do like, when I do a blush swatch, I think you, most of you understand now that I put one colour on and then I take all of that and the base makeup off, reapply the base makeup and then I do the next colour. Take it all off again, reapply the base product and then do the next colour. And then I do that for um, all of the products that I'm doing for the month, generally in one sitting. So there'll be two sets of blush products to do per month, two sets of eye products, that sort of thing. So that's why sometimes you see collections that are smaller in the month, which I know is not necessarily the most interesting thing, but honestly it's like, <laughs> it's a marathon sometimes. But I don't do this as a full-time job. I don't have time to just do, like I would love to just do, you know, one thing per day, one look or like one set of reviews, but um, there's not that much daylight <laughs> in the day. So if I go to work, then when I come back I won't have time to do it before the sun goes down which makes things difficult but anyway that was a long tangent the reason why I go through my cushions so much in comparison to any other product is because of swatches because what will happen is I don't want to have the product on the back of my hand in the meantime and it's it's tricky to get the right amount of product out to start with so cushions are much better because you can just dab in get some and put it on and then dab if you just need a little bit more it's clean, it's effective, and that's what I use cushion products for the most. I guess I'm not going to put any more foundation on my forehead, even though it's not covered. Like, I've got like a scar on my forehead at the moment because I burnt myself in the face. Uh, with my curling iron, I it was curling some of the like, like parts of my hair up here before it was cut, and it slips, and I hit myself in the head with it. It's like a GHD curling wand. And the whole thing is hot, obviously, because otherwise it wouldn't make a curl. And um, I burnt a big chunk of my forehead. And I was like, oh, that'll be fine. Like, it'll be nothing. And then it kind of, the next day, it was like, you know, quite burned looking. Not to the point where it was like blistering or anything like that, but it did scar, <laughs> unfortunately. 
Oops. <laughs> so that is what the foundation looks like. I'm just going to turn down the exposure because I feel like on camera it's a little difficult to see, but that is what it looks like. It's a really nice color and honestly my skin does look really nice and flawless. It's not super dewy of a foundation, so that's why I have a more dewy primer underneath to make my skin look a lot more um, luminous. And I'll zoom you guys in at the end and you'll be able to see the texture and everything. So the next product I'm actually going to use are the Misha Velvet Light Color Sticks. There are three in the collection that I have because I have the contouring and highlighting ones. So the lightest color here is the highlight. We've got a mid-toned contour and then a darker contour. So I don't know what the names are because they're not in English on the packaging. So this is the middle color. I'm just going to put this, I'm trying to get my hair out of the way. I'm going to put that down here and then a little bit ah, here, and then a little bit there as well. Um, normally I would put some on my forehead to make it rounder looking, but uh, fringe, so nope, won't do that today. We'll do the same thing here. This side is tricky because it's a really similar color to my birthmark, um, so it's actually really hard to make a nice solid line. And I'm actually gonna put a little bit like, it's gonna tap a little tiny, tiny bit down the side of my nose as well. I really, really, really like this contour. It's not, I mean, it's not, I don't think it's really supposed to go on your nose because it's such a chubby shape, but I find it works so well. It's like the most natural looking contour that I have ever tried, including like the powders, including all of the other cream products that I've tried to. I don't know what it is about this one because it doesn't look like, I mean, the color itself, like the color looks good for me, I think, but you know, when I saw swatches, I was kind of like, oh, you know, that looks like it would be an interesting product to try, but I don't think it's going to be an amazing one for me. But honestly, I love it so much. It's so natural. It's so easy to apply. I've still got bits of hair stuck to my face from my haircut. Hmm. Oh, well, just keep going. And it's just like, look at that. It blends in so, so easily. I am just using the same cushion puff that I used to... Um, apply my foundation. So there's a little bit of foundation that's helping it to blend out still and obviously I did not set my skin before doing that. Um, yeah, how pretty. I feel like it works okay on the nose but it probably would be better if I use like a different sort of applicator because it's such a wide circle that it's not really that precise which I guess like great for the cheeks, great for the jawline, great for around the hairline as well on the forehead. But not so great for your nose. That's easily fixed though, so not problematic. See, that's so like, just looks a bit messed up, but whatever, that's fine. And then I'm going to use the highlighter. Now, I don't really like the highlighter that much. Um, it is quite sparkly, so I'm going to put that on the high point of my cheek that was a little bit low, and a little bit on my nose. Mm-mm-mm. Sure, why not? And I'm going to use a clean, dirty cushion puff. This has still got foundation on it from yesterday, um, but it hasn't got the contour on it. If you want to use the same, I like. If you want to use the same cushion puff, you could always flip it to the other side. But because I use like, I make like a little taco shape like that with one finger. So I've got one finger that presses down, and that way I can kind of get into my cheekbone a little bit better, and it makes it easier to blend things like this. So I actually have product like the coloured like contour product all down the middle part of this cushion puff. So I can't use the other side of it, but that's okay. I have plenty of um, not contour coloured cushion puffs on my drawers. Why that was a hard sentence to say, I do not know. I'm not going to use the deeper contour today because I just don't feel like I really need it. Um, but if I was going for something a bit more dramatic or like an evening look, I would just add just a little bit of this into like the very little like dip of my cheekbone and it darkens it up really beautifully. But overall, this isn't one that I use a whole lot. So you can see the highlighter there. I don't mind the highlighter. I just don't like it that much because it's a bit like when you look really closely, it does look quite glittery and I don't like that. It's also now got bits of hair stuck in it. Oh no. Oh well. I'm going to set my skin with the Laura Mercier Translucent Loose Setting Powder, just like always. And I'm actually going to start with my forehead because I don't want my fringe to stick to it. So I'm going to powder the living, the living lights out of it because it's powdery. 
it won't be sticky. Same with my eyelids, I actually powder my eyelids too. I don't know if that's weird to you guys, but um, I feel like I don't use <laughs> I don't use an eyeshadow primer, so I find that most eyeshadows work better for me if my eyelids are not sticky, which is I know like the general purpose of an eyeshadow primer, but I feel like everything blends far better for me when it's not sticky. So I pretty much set I put foundation on my eyelids because again sometimes I, I don't wear sometimes I don't wear eyeshadow and I obviously want my eyelids to look the same colour as the rest of my face but even when I do wear eyeshadow I just don't use a primer and set my face with a powder. Alright so that is the general base done. I would fix my fringe nicely but I'm going to have to do my eyebrows anyway so I guess we're going to make some curtains. Mmm, that's a look. So for eyebrows, I'm going to be using my Innisfree Brow Kit. This one is the two-toned eyeshadow, or two-toned eyebrow kit. I think mine is in dark brown, which is number two. It's got a number two written on it, so we're going to go with that. I'm pretty sure it's called dark brown. And to do my eyebrows, I'm going to use my Zoeva uh, 322 Brow Line Brush. And I'm going to do eyeshadow afterwards, so I might as well just zoom even now. So I'm just going to... Fill in my eyebrows, not super precisely because fringe. Sorry, you can't see anything if I do that. Oh no. I really do enjoy this eyebrow colour. It's like the perfect colour for my eyebrows. Like, look at those. Could it get any better than that? And it actually just, yeah, it's almost exactly what I wanted. I love the colour. Um, I love the formula, it looks really nice and it works really easily. And the only thing I don't like is that it's got one tiny little square here of a lighter brown. Um, but it looks kind of, it's like a very like khaki grey kind of colour. And I have absolutely no use for that. But you know what, at least it's only the tiniest little square here and the whole rest of that is the right colour. And that's what I wanted because a lot of the eyebrow kits that I looked at Looked like they'd have the right colours, but they came with so many other things. And I'm very particular with my eyebrow products. I don't like them to have that many things on them. Like, I just don't use that many things for my eyebrows. I've got a really nice eyebrow, like, um, brow gel thing. Like, I love this one. I've got this one. I've got <laughs> this one. And, like, I already have all of the things that work well for me, and I just needed a powder. Powder is my day-to-day -day anyway, so it definitely works better for me there. Beautiful! Look at those brows. They are a lovely, dark, cool grey colour. It's not too intense. I could make it darker if I wanted to by adding more product, but this is a really nice everyday brow. This is a very lazy version of my everyday brows because you won't be able to see them. So next up I'm going to be doing eyeshadow. I'm just going to kind of leave my hair like this. I'm going to be using the Peach Sea Soft Brown Mood Eyeshadow Palette. Why is everything called Mood Eyeshadow Palettes? Um, and this is what it, it's very out of focus. This is what it looks like here. It has got so many beautiful brown shades. I have tried some of the lighter ones. So I think I've tried the, uh, this one, this one, and this one. So maybe, hold on, let me think about this. Maybe let's try it a slightly warmer variation. So I'm going to use this middle brown colour in my crease. Sorry, there's no names on the back. I'm going to use the glittery shade in the inner third. And then I'm going to try and use this glittery shade. Is that going to work? I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to try and use this glittery shade in the outer corner. I don't usually use a glitter in the outer corner. Otherwise, I might... Hmm. I want to try it though, because I don't really have that much use for this colour like in the inner corner or over the lid generally, it's just a bit too dark, so normally I would do like this kind of colour in the outer corner, but let's give that one, that one, and that one a go. We will see. Oh, I didn't get my brushes. So I'm going to set up with that crease colour and I'm going to use my Zoeva 228 Luxe Crease, crease Brush, and I'm just going to give that a go. I mean, if it looks atrocious, we just can take it off. I've only used this palette once so far, but I actually liked the way that the eyeshadows came out. Oh, this is really hard to see. Um, 
I did find that the eyeshadows were quite soft and gentle, so same with this colour that I'm using at the moment. Honestly, it is my preference though. So looking at how deep that looks compared to what it looks like on my eyelid, it's very like watercolour, it's very washed, like not washed out, but like, I don't know, watercolour is probably the best way to describe it. This is incredibly awkward, I can't really see anything. There we go, that's a bit better. So I'm just holding a mirror now. Otherwise, when I look down at the mirror, um, you won't be able to see anything that I do. And if I keep my eyes up, I won't be able to see anything that I do. This is so annoying. And then I'm just going to bring it underneath the eye line as well. Not the eye line, the lower lash line. And this is a very precise method of feeling where my eye line, where my eyeshadow is, and just closing my eyes and running it across like that. <laughs> Honestly though, did it work or did it work? Then I'm going to pick up that lighter glitter colour and I'm going to pop this in the inner third. It's actually not too bad because it's not too bright or too intense. I was kind of concerned that it was going to be more pigmented than the crease colour because that would look a little weird. Then bringing that up into the crease a little bit to meet the other colour and right across. So I'm going to do maybe like two thirds from the inner because I just don't want too much of that dark colour. This is a really pretty colour though. It's like a beautiful rosy copper gold. It's not super rosy, maybe like copper is a good word. And then I'm also going to put some of that in the inner corner, mating up with that bottom eyeshadow colour underneath too. I'm not going to put a huge amount in there because otherwise it'll look a bit funny. And then I'm going to use the other side of the brush <laughs> to keep one side clean and one side the other colour. And I'm going to pick up that dark glitter, very lightly, <laughs> tapping off all of the excess. And I'm just going to gently pat that into the remaining third of my eye, just to deepen it up. That looks quite nice, actually. It's kind of like blending in with the lighter glitter. And I'm just kind of making a little zigzag motion in the middle where those two colors meet to blend them together. I think that looks nice. We'll just add just a little bit more. So just the gentlest pat. It's a really pretty colour brown, this one. A really pretty colour of brown. There you go, that sounds nice. Ooh, I like that. I like that a lot. And then to save you from boredom, I'm going to do the other side off camera. And I'm also going to do my eyeliner and mascara because I don't have any new eyeliner mascara. It's the same two ones that I've been using for like two months now. Um, it's not going to look any different than normal. So I'll be back with my eyes done so you can have a look. So both eyes are done now and I just fixed my bangs and that was like the dumbest idea because now you can't see it properly. But um, there will be some slow footage at the end where you can see. But I think that the eyeshadow look looks really cute from what you can see. And obviously it's just the same black eyeliner and... Mascara is normal. I don't have any false eyelashes because I can't be bothered with that. <laughs> Just not that high maintenance, I guess. So I'm going to zoom you out and we are going to keep going with the rest of the makeup. Okay, so next up we have blush and I'm going to be using one of the colours from the I'm Meme Afternoon Tea. And my haul video hasn't come out yet. It'll be tomorrow from when we are today. It's the 2nd of October. Um, so I still don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Uh... Mm, I should really Google it, but I'm trying to decide on what colour I think that we should do today. Normally I would go with the pink, but I feel like that peach is going to look a lot nicer with the eyeshadow. So we're going to go for the peach. This one is called Hibiscus Tea. They have all of the names on the back, which I'm so thankful for. <laughs> I'm going to use my regular blush blush, blush brush. This is the Zoeva 126 Luxe Cheek Finish Brush. And these have got such a good pan size for brushes. It's brilliant honestly. I'm going to pick up just a little bit and huh, how am I going to do my blush with hair like this? Hmm. I'm going to go for like a nice central 
to sort of blush there. Oh, that was way too much. Okay. We'll come back and fix that in a bit. So I'm pretty much just going to put the blush like right here underneath my eye because, I don't know, kind of felt like it doesn't really tie in with the whole contour. <laughs> but I already put it down and I didn't think about that, so whatever. It'll be fine. So I'm just kind of bringing the blush across my cheek and up there. I'm just starting it more underneath my eye than I normally would, but it's kind of following the same pattern. This is such a pretty colour and I actually really like this blush trio. I think that all three colours, what was my friend doing? All three colours are really pretty, really functional and the packaging is really nice as well. I feel like I'm, what's happening to me today? And then I'm just going to make sure that the edges are really blurred using a different brush. This is a Real Techniques multitask brush and I'm just going to blend that around here. This just had some powder on it from yesterday so it's clean and it won't give any other color transfer. There we go. And then for lips, I'm going to be using the Etude House Soda Soft Drink Tint. This one is the BL601, which is like the lemonade one. And I'm using this color because I do need to do swatches for my lips today, so I can't stain them yet. They do have a bit of foundation on them. And this one looks like it's clear, but it's actually going to make my lips just a little bit pink. So it'll be very nice and it tastes delicious. So the lips are just that little bit pinker, but they're also a little bit glossy. So it's very, very cute. I'm taking my hair out because now I am done. Oh, I did make it crimpy. Dang it. I thought I'd be fine putting like a little scrunchie in, but mm, no, not today apparently. Still trying to figure out how to make my hair look nice without it looking like I've got way too much hair. So overall, I think that this is quite a pretty look, but I feel like I'm just kind of thrown off with what my hair looks like at the moment. It just doesn't look quite right somehow, but I really like the eyeshadow. I think that the foundation looks really beautiful. Um, there's nothing bad about it. It's just not, yeah, I don't know. It's not that great, I think. So this is how we're looking today. I hope you guys enjoyed getting ready with me today, and I hope that I didn't complain too much. Still cannot get this fringe to sit nicely, but uh, I will get used to it by the time this video comes up. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.